Hi, this is ITX from Vintage Mobile Phones. And today we're going to talk about a feature that changed the way we use mobile phones forever. Before that, mobile phones were simply used to send and receive text messages, to make phone calls, but nothing else really. And this all changed with the introduction of this very feature. And yeah, uh, before we begin to um, talk about the very phone that it's concerning in particular, uh, we have to introduce another phone. Uh, I'm sure you all remember the film Matrix. And in the movie, uh, Neo receives a package from FedEx. He opens it and this phone pops out. It's the Nokia 8110. And as you can see, I could open this phone, but only with my finger, with my thumb. And um, But in the movie, you see that the, the spring mechanism pops out as soon as he presses some button or uh, uh, something on the back of the phone. And people always thought that this phone had a spring-loaded mechanism, but it wasn't the case. It was really just built for the movie prop in particular. So Nokia decided to introduce this feature in another phone. And this phone is the Nokia 7110. And as you can see, I can open it with my finger, with my thumb, with my thumb again, but I can also press a button on the back and release the spring. But <laughs> that's not the feature we talk about today, of course. Uh, that's just one of the few interesting things about this device. But the elephant in the room, really, is something else. Okay, the, the second thing is this uh, very unusual and quite unique uh, Navi roller, that's what it's called from Nokia. Uh, instead of pressing up and down buttons, as we can see on this device, up, down, um, on this device you have a rolling button that you can um, use to navigate, to scroll to the menu. And oh, okay, I already <laughs> jumped to the to the menu that it concerns. So as I as I said, phones before this phone were simply there to send, receive test text messages, make phone calls, some uh, other features like um, I don't know one or two games maybe, uh, a calculator, a calendar, the usual stuff. But um, one very important feature was still left out and it was the usage of the internet. The internet was very, very popular, became uh, extremely popular and um, especially at the end of the, of the 90s. So uh, people have to, had to come up with um, a way to implement the internet on phones, of course. Um, back then it was, of course, not possible to use the real internet, like um, depict um, certain web pages exactly on the phone. It would have, uh, one, it would have cost too much, of course, but two, phones were simply not capable. They didn't have uh, a memory, they didn't have um, the display to uh, depict um, very complex web pages. So they had to come up with a really uh, easy solution. And um, so they developed this solution quite a long time. This phone, uh, this phone's introduction was um, um, not, it, I think it was one year after they said it, they will introduce it because they had problems um, developing this feature. So even though they said they will introduce the phone in 1998, it came out in 1999. And it had the wireless application protocol as the first phone, as the first phone on the planet. Um, wireless application protocol, or short, WAP. And uh, there it is, ladies and gentlemen. This is WAP. Of course, I cannot go to an address. It's one. It's it's WAP 1.0, and um, 
and it's outdated for, I don't know, decades. Um, back then you had to connect via um, a certain telephone number. The phone would dial up the number like uh, a very old modem. That's the, the, the uh, sound that you always heard, this typical 90s sound. This phone also did that in a slightly different way. But of course, nowadays it's not possible. All the numbers that you had to dial, they are all discontinued as of now. And um, so, I, unfortunately, I cannot show you the real WAP internet on this phone. But, of course, I can talk about it. So, WAP internet, what it does is... it. I'm not very keen on the, on the technical side, but um, as far as I remember it... Um, it used a different protocol. It, it didn't use the HTML or HTTP. Uh, it had a slightly different protocol. I think it was called WML. And this protocol took a certain web page that you entered and really stripped it down, for lack of a better word. Uh, the page was stripped down, immensely uh, simplified, Pictures were only uh, in grayscale um, or even no pictures at all. I think there wasn't even a, a, a setting in the phone where you could uh, enter if you if you would like to depict pictures or not. Uh, appearance settings. Uh, show images, yes. Show images, yes or no. So you could even uh, completely... Uh, I don't know, fade out the pictures entirely from a, from a certain web, web page. And yeah, so it made browsing on the, on the phone really, really simple. Um, the only problem was back then phone carriers weren't even, weren't really ready for that. Um, they had very um, bad tariffs with uh, very bad data plans. Um, you had to pay uh, per minute, so the dial-up connection was uh, was really a, a per minute uh, a payment. So <laughs> some people came up with uh, the idea that WAP is short for wait and pay. <laughs> so it really was that after all. Um, you have to wait for a very long time for a page to load completely. Um, there were even some web pages that were uh, particularly designed for WAP. So they had certain WAP pages. You could, instead of typing www.example.com, you could uh, type WAP.example.com and then have the WAP uh, page that was designed specifically for WAP. But not all pages had it. Only a few, I think the 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 common news pages like the New York Times or, uh, I don't know, maybe some financial sites. But that, that was about it. Uh, oh, maybe maybe some uh, airplane booking sites, I think, if I remember correctly, or uh, uh, ticket sites in, uh, in general. They also had that. But as you can see, it was a relatively new feature. And people back then also thought, so... Pff, that's a phone. I'm not supposed to browse the internet like I do on a, on a laptop or a computer. Why do I even have to bother with the internet? So there were there were some complicated things, some, some problems that came with the whole idea of internet on the phone. But eventually, as we all know, after a few years, things started to become more common, more usable, faster with the introduction of color displays, of course, everything changed. Um, internet got faster. There wasn't a, a, a per minute uh, payment anymore. There was only a package payment where you paid for uh, one megabyte or later even for, I don't know, bigger packages like 50 megabyte or something. So things eventually got better, but this very phone was the phone that started the whole thing entirely. And if it wasn't for this phone, if it wasn't for the Nokia 7110, then I think 
we would not have this type of internet on the phone today, where today a phone really just is a small computer where you can uh, display the whole internet in its entirety with zero to no compromises whatsoever. But yeah, things uh, look, looked a lot, a lot more complicated and not that simple back then. So it took some time. It all started with the fact that they um, they had to um, um, they had to delay the release of this phone for a number of months because they had problem with the implementation of WAP. So things didn't start very good for this phone. It, it, things things really looked bad, and even though this phone was um, like the I don't know, the check of all trades, the flagship of Nokia back then, it didn't quite sell very well. And the few people that bought it also didn't really use the WAP internet um, because they didn't have data plans for it. Well, it was a mess, really. But as you can see, as it's always with new technologies or new features introduced on a phone. We, we saw that in a number of things. We saw that with cameras on a the phone. There is the, uh, the Ericsson T68M that I will also talk about in a future video. Um, it introduced cameras and I don't, I, I don't know if you, if you, uh, if you seen um, pictures from this, from this phone, but uh, they're really bad and pixelated and you couldn't even tell what's on the photo really. And the the viewer, the viewfinder was, <laughs> I don't know, one picture per second or something. So every time a new feature, a revolutionary feature gets introduced on a phone, you can be sure that it's a, that it's a mess. You can be sure that it's not perfect at all. There are flaws, there are problems. Um, the carriers have problems implementing the feature. For example, way, way back in the days, SMS, that's, that's, that's something relatively new. I didn't know about that, but uh, I read about it. SMS text messages used to be free of charge. They weren't costing anything at all. Um, I think the, the brands, the companies, the phone companies, initially introduced SMS text messages as a way to send service messages to the carrier or technical stuff or something. They really didn't think that SMS would become um, this sort of universal communication feature that for a short period of time even replaced or, or was even more popular than uh, telephone itself, than phoning a friend instead of Instead of phoning some somebody, telephone used to telephone. Uh, there was a time where SMS were even more popular than the regular phone call. So that tells you a lot about the whole thing I said of implementing new features. Back then, a free of a thing that was free of charge, nobody really bet an eye on it. And uh, as you can see, nowadays we have, okay, stuff like, like WhatsApp, iMessage, Telegram. It really replaced the SMS after all. But if it wasn't for the SMS, all these things, all these apps that we have today, they wouldn't even exist. Let's be honest. They wouldn't even exist without them. So you can see that's only one uh, example of many, many, many things that were introduced in phones weren't really a success in the first place, but eventually became the go-to feature, as you were, if you will. So I hope this shorter video, it's way shorter than the last one. I hope this short video uh, was helpful for you and you got an idea of how the internet came to the phone. And yes, that's it. So I hope you enjoyed. If you enjoyed it, leave a thumbs up, um, subscribe maybe. And I hope I can post videos uh, more regularly in the future. 
Um, I don't really have much time to, to make videos because um, I work a lot and my, also in my private life I have a lot of things to do. But okay, um, I, ho I really hope that I can uh, give out the new video way sooner and uh, tell you more about the awesome cool stuff that I know about phones that I think really people should know because it's very interesting and it's... and. Things like that are the reason why I'm so interested in collecting phones. It's such a pleasure to uh, discover this whole thing, how one feature came about and how this feature looked back then and uh, all the experimental stuff that uh, phone brands tried over the years that were unsuccessful, some of them were successful. It's just so cool. It's it's the whole reason why we collect mobile phones, let's be honest. <laughs> so thank you guys for watching and have a nice day. Bye-bye.